How are you going? I've discovered a big secret. You're useless. I'm useless. We're all absolutely useless. This is what a regular day looks like for us normies. And why do we all do this? Well, probably because none of us actually understand how anything works or care. Like take a good hard stare at the device in front of you right now. Really, really look at it. What is it? Who made it? What is it made of? And unless you're the small Chinese kid that made the device, you probably have no idea how it works or how to fix it. It's all a big mystery. You know, if everything around me broke at once, I would literally be held hostage in a room full of puzzles. Also, by the chance you are a Chinese factory kid watching this video right now, uh, I would say your break time's probably over and you should get back to work. And um, next time, make sure you don't bring your phone into the workplace, all right? But in all honesty, even that kid doesn't understand how it works or how to fix these devices, as he doesn't even have an education, as he couldn't afford to go to school. Loser. And this constant cycle of us buying crappy products, breaking them, and not knowing how to fix them results in millions of tons of fixable, usable things being thrown away every year. And then millions of people being tortured because they have to dig through our toxic poo for a living. So today, I'm gonna try and restore some things and become a little bit more useful. Now, I could just fix some products and keep them for myself, but that's boring and I don't make any money from that. So instead, I'm gonna copy the format of all these viral videos, like how much money can I be an Uber driver doing things make from selling my mom's breast milk, and then rip off some people by selling the fixed products as retro or antique on Facebook Marketplace for more than they're worth. All right, now to do this, I need to get some things to fix. And my council used to have a pretty cool process of garbage removal, similar to medieval times, where twice a year, everyone would collect all the filth in their house, drag it to the front of the street and chuck it in a pile, where it would wait until two smelly men on a horse-drawn wagon would come around, scoop it up and go bury it in the ground for our future generations to find. And this process was actually great for people like me that enjoy digging through other people's trash to find cool things like Rusty's syringes that can poke me. But sadly, communal garbage days are a thing of the past and now everyone has to individually call up the council and order trash removal days, meaning it's much harder to find trash and do recycling. So because I can't rely on that method anymore, I'm gonna head on down to a place where we now dump all the old useless things to wither and die when we no longer have a place for them in society. Have you ever been to a scrapyard? No. You never have? No. I feel a bit weird going in because I can feel, I feel like they kind of judge me a bit like they know I'm not. You're not a scrap boy. I'm not bored into scrap like them. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, who's this Second fake? They can tell? They're all, they're all about they like, scrap life. They can, they can really tell. I don't know how. Where can I park? It's probably the skinny I jeans. Like oh, you go all the way down the bottom. I feel like I park in the wrong place. They're just going to take my car apart. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is why there were so many bushfires. They took all the fire hoses. <laughs> Anything catch your eye? Oh, that bed head. Yeah? Well, I'll buy you whatever you want. Yeah? You pick... Oh, is that a drill? Wait. One here. You can have anything you want. Look, I'll give you my credit card. I feel like I'm in a Mr. Beast video. Well, you are, right. okay? I'll give you my credit card. I've got 10 minutes to... Here you go, 10 minutes to buy whatever you want in the scrapyard. Go, go, you, you can have it. I want these bins. Oh wait, mate! I think two. You, right. Yep, grab yeah. it. Why not grab another one? You could get more than that. Well, I gotta call my wife. <laughs> <laughs> you won't believe what happened. I bet I did a thing, and he said I can have anything I want from the scrapyard. Anything, anything you want. Tell her her life's gonna change. Oh, he says your life's gonna change, Margaret. Oi! I found something you'll love. Is it season four of Cracker? Cracker. You know Cracker? I don't know what Cracker. Is. Oh. 
Well, then maybe it's not for you. What about season five? Okay, yeah. I'm yeah, that's like better. It. And I love scrapyards. There's so much stuff to look at, all stacked up on top of each other that could fall over and kill you at any moment. And for some reason, after hours and hours of digging through trash, the only thing we could think about was murder. Why are you obsessed with killing me? 30 seconds each to find the best weapon to kill someone with. Oh, okay. And then we have to, how do, how do we and then we have to fight. I don't know, and then we fight. Okay. All right, 30 seconds, go. I'm done, mate. I'm really? going to kill you. <laughs> well, I guess you win then, because I haven't found okay, anything. Do you want to see my trick? My killing yep. trick? Yes. It's two parts, right? You do this, and first you distract them by doing this cool thing where the thing comes back, and they're like, oh, how to do that? And then, bam! This will really be a Mr. Beast video if we open this and it's filled with cash. Well? Well? Oh, they're onto us. All right, so this is everything I've collected for the grand total of $20. Ram set, hammer drill, $300. Bosch, 1812, $300 new. Shears, $50. Adjustable wrench, $150 new. Dawn vise, $200. And this big boy, which is pretty badly damaged, but I took it because new, it's worth a crazy $1,100. And I have no idea who buys a food mixer for $1,000. Like surely you could use something else, like a drill. Yeah, so in total, all of this is worth $2,000 new, and I got it for $20, but I need to fix them and sell them first to get that money. And I'm gonna start with plugging in the two drills with the hope that they will just work and I won't have to do anything. Which is not the case. So I'm gonna start opening it all up. Now, because a child probably constructed this tool, I thought it was only appropriate that a child helped me take it apart. Um. Can I have the screwdriver? No, no, come on. What? That, that's not words. I don't know what that means. I need the screwdriver. I need the screwdriver. Give me this, please. 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 Thank you. Yeah, you can have that. You can have, go have fun. Go have fun. Go. You can go, go. There you go. Go have fun. And after opening it up, I immediately realized I had no idea what any of these things inside are and got super intimidated. So I decided to do the easier job of de-rusting first, which is as simple as carefully taking all the metal tools apart without losing anything and then using every single bottle of vinegar in the house to create a rust bath, which they will bathe in overnight. So let's go back to the drill. And the components are just as confusing as before, but after opening it, it wasn't as dirty as I thought. And that's good, because I think I've already spotted a problem. As unless this is one of those wireless wires I've heard about, then this connection is probably meant to be plugged in here, which is hopefully all I have to do to fix it. But just to be safe, I'm gonna take the rest apart, and I'm also gonna take a couple of photos so I can put it back in the same way. And these other screws are pretty seized up, so I decided I was going to spray WD-40 in every hole I could see to lubricate them. And I'm almost in, but to open up the main body of the drill, I had to get past this little snap ring, which is definitely one of the funnest parts of all of this. It literally took me over an hour of stabbing myself with different screwdrivers to get this guy off. Then I got too excited and pulled the rest off without paying any attention to how it was originally arranged. And after dealing with two more snap rings, I finally got it open. And I'm so glad I persisted as the inside was everything I dreamed of. A nice big delicious pile of grease. And this is my first time seeing any of this and I have no idea what any of these components are or how they work or what I'm meant to do to fix them. But I'm gonna take a guess and say that they're not meant to be brown. So I'm gonna start with giving it all a scrub down. And I love cleaning off grease. It's so easy. All you do, you just soak the parts in warm water and soap. Then you borrow a family member's toothbrush and then you give it all a good old scrub. Then make sure you don't wash your hands. So when you walk around touching stuff in the house, you leave grease marks everywhere. And this is actually extremely useful as it allows you to easily retrace your steps if you ever lose yourself. How are you going? There you go. 
Then, once you're done, make sure you do the considerate thing and return your family member's toothbrush to where you found it. And leave your sparkling clean parts to dry overnight. And then, in the morning, it hit me. I had no idea how to put this thing back together. And my photos didn't really help either, as I only took one picture of the drill's insides and the rest were of this cute little baby. <laughs> So I did the only thing I could, which was working backwards through everything I did. Put this thing back in here, screw it in. Get the snap rings back on, clean this thing, break a cup, stab myself with a screwdriver, ball back in here, aggressively two hand the last snap ring back on, and somehow I got it all back together, which means it's lube time. And I don't know why I felt it appropriate to apply lube with a metal straw. I almost forgot a couple of times and nearly had a sip, but it seems to work okay. Now, I almost had the other half of the body back together, but while I was cleaning the commutator, which is this thing here that makes contact with these graphite brushes, I noticed that there was something strange about the brushes. So I took them out and I'm pretty sure they shouldn't look like this. They're super chipped, short and damaged. And if I had to guess how this happened, I would probably say the previous owner, Makaya, probably got a little hungry while doing some DIY and had a little nibble. And you know what? I can't blame you, mate. They are delicious. So I ordered some new brushes online for a whopping $20, the price of all the tools together. And while they're flying over here in a plane, let's go back to the rusty tools. These tools have been soaking for a day now, so hopefully all the rust just floats away. And you know, I have a theory about people that get enjoyment out of watching other people clean things like rusty tools. And that is that you probably have a lot of crap you're meant to be cleaning yourself. But instead of doing that, you're kind of virtually doing it by watching other people and getting false satisfaction until suddenly you snap out of it and you look down and you're surrounded in filth wearing a packet of chips as shoes. And I can't blame you. Like, why wouldn't you want to watch this expert who decides to stick his hands in vinegar and steal wool after cutting them multiple times earlier and then almost break his wrist with a wire drill? Moving on, I just gave them some more of the blue lube, sharpened them and fixed their bent bits. And here we have it, three very shiny tools. And look at that difference. I think I have a boner. Okay, now onto the last drill. And I left this for last because I thought it looked like it was in better condition than the other. So I wanted to practice fixing the crap one first as I wouldn't care if I broke it. So I did the same thing as before and took it apart. And it seems as though this one is gonna be much easier to fix than the first one as one of the brushes was just kind of caught and not making contact with the commutator. So I just pushed it back down and gave it a little tickle. Then ate some grease, gave it a bath, cleaned the commutator, forgot how to put it back together, lubed it up anyway and put it back together. And I always get such a nice rush of satisfaction after finally fixing something. You know, I, f I feel useful with the purpose in my life for like 30 minutes. And this is what all you lucky religious folk must feel like 24 seven. Then for a finishing shine, I cleaned the drill with my drill. And then I cleaned that drill with another drill while it was cleaning my drill. And now the most important part, testing if they work. Drill. Check. Vice. Check. Spanner. Check. Shears. Check. And the last drill. Check. Okay, now that everything's in order and working, I grabbed all of it to take some saucy photos for Facebook Marketplace and Gumtree. Now, if you don't know what Gumtree is, it's an online marketplace similar to Craigslist, where you can find everything from a bagpipe player to free ducks, or find Chris, who is looking for nudie models to work with him on a casual basis. So I cast all my exclusive antique items here on Facebook Marketplace and waited for the buyers to come swimming over and have a little nibble. And you may have noticed that I didn't end up attempting to fix the giant expensive food blender. And that's because when I bought it from the scrapyard, I let the amazing price tag cloud my judgment and quickly purchased it. But it turns out I am missing quite a few parts, mainly this long thing, which is worth $700 new. So it just doesn't make sense for me to buy it. So sadly, I won't be able to fix it and Benoit is just gonna have to find something else to blend with. All right, looks like I got my first bite. And it's from Hasim, who is highly rated and wants to offer 
me $40 and I try to haggle for $60 by reasoning that it's very shiny but he never responds. And he's playing hard to get really breaks me and I, I give in and I accept the $40 but it's too late and he never comes back. Then Talitz also messages me about the vice but is concerned about the metal thing sticking out of the top. And then he strangely asks for the size of my jaw while they're open. So I measure them and give it to him but then he never comes back. Then Paul has a little nibble at the drill, but wants a handle and I don't have one. So I lie and I tell him I found one in my house when actually I was too embarrassed to tell him that I pedaled down to the store just for him to buy one. But even after that, he ignores me and he buys a different one. Then Dominic comes in and has a sniff at the vice and like Talitz, body shames it. And I was starting to feel very insecure about it and considered cutting the little metal bit off when legendary Alex swoops in and offers me a crispy $20 for it. Now, I can't actually be bothered to cut off the metal, so I accept Alex's 20, just as long as it's actually crispy. To which he responds, crispier than a sunny spring morning. And like that, I made my first sale, a nice, crispy 20. Which means I'm breaking even on buying all the tools. And after that, the sales really started to come in. James came in and offered me a big hundo for the drill. And no one seems interested in the shears, which makes sense, as I don't think many 19th century sheep ranchers still use Facebook. But people are going crazy for the antique vice, which I'm starting to think I sold too cheap. Then Yannick offered me 50 for the wrench, and like that, I was rich. So here's the grand total. $20 spent on tools at the scrapyard, $20 spent on carbon brushes, for a total of $40 spent. And I made $170 in sales minus the $40, which means I'm $130 up after three days work, which ain't very much. But if you add in the $250 I made modeling for Chris, that brings me up to a total of $380 profit. So is it worth your while fixing old tools? Well, on one hand, it's good because you're recycling and saving stuff from landfill. But on the other hand, I realize if you do stop buying new stuff, then that cute Chinese kid from before will suddenly become unemployed. So I reckon the better option if you need some quick cash is to just give in and sell your body to Chris. Thank you so much for watching. If you like that, make sure to subscribe and check out some of my other stuff.